Best is a really, really cool place. I've gotten a lot of great compliments on it. Um, I have to say that I found out that the owner is a Johnston Wells alum, so I'm very excited about the success that she's having. I always like to hear about fellow people that went to Johnston Wells with me before or after have great success. But in just a second, we're going to welcome Chef Sean in, who is from The Shanty. And we're going to talk a lot about what their menu's got going on and his style and what he's done and his background. But while I'm waiting for the quick setup to happen, I know that I, I branched into the beginning of the segment about the events that are coming up. And Eat Drink RI with David Adakin is one of the big ones that's coming up for the month of April. So make sure you check out his website for Eat Drink RI. You're going to look at, he's got a sommelier coming up, um, a dinner with dames coming up. There's a lot of great stuff that happens. And then he's got the main food event that takes place at the Rhode Island Convention Center. So I do want to make sure that I highlight it. And if you are still sending me messages about things coming up, don't worry, I'll do my best to highlight them not only on social media, but also when we talk about here on the show. And I just got a message while we were setting up about, am I still taking suggestions for future segments? Absolutely. If you've got someone that you'd like to see highlighted or a topic that you want to be discussed, please let me know. Um, I did get asked about Mother's Day. We are absolutely going to highlight Mother's Day over the next couple of weeks. We do have a segment that's going to be dedicated to new restaurants that are opening up in the area. Excited to see those. And Sean's coming in with food, so I'm going to stop talking and go to the food. Because I want to eat right. Hey, Chef, thank you for making it. Yep, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. And you uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you accommodating me. Of course. And look at this. We're going, like I said, we're going from wine to beer. So I'm going to have you go right up against here. The first thing we got to do is I got to talk about, before we even get to your background, this amazing food, is tell me about the shanty. So kind of tell me how the name came about. And then... I'd really like you to kind of describe the space because it's really cool. Yeah, the, the name came about by Kara, the owner. Her favorite book happens to be The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so, so when she was looking around for restaurants, she ended up finding this little tiny dilapidated building in Warwick. Look, it was totally gutted. There was nothing inside. So what ended up happening was the building reminded her of the picture in her head from the shanty towns from the book at the end. That's awesome. So, so the book's about the Great Depression and how everybody was in this, like shanty towns. So, yeah, but I love that correlation. That's an awesome yeah, way that's, to come that's about. That's literally how she came up with the name. Yeah. So tell us what the restaurant looks like now because you are now four years old, right? Yeah, four years old. The restaurant has about a 22 seat bar. The bar is the primary attraction. The um, We have a Edison light bulb chandelier. It's all out of repurposed wood. Is I think it's an old door, actually, that, really? the, that the chandelier is built off of. Yeah. So we have a small room in the back. Seats about 20 people. We still have the original wood seats along the windows, and that's about. Was that's it a, about was it. it a restaurant before Kara took it over? Yeah, it was a restaurant before. It was uh, Ward's Public House, I believe. Okay. Yeah, right there on Post Road. So you guys, it's kind of like the East Greenwich Warwick line. With yeah, it's East Bay. Greenwich Warwick line. It's it's more so, it's it's directly at the end of uh, Kawisa Ave. Okay. Yeah. So you're actually getting closer to the water as you get over there where you are. Yes. Yes. Actually, yeah. Um, the water you could probably throw a stone into the water from the parking lot. That's perfect. Yeah. So we had talked before when we were prepping up for the interview. The chef and I had gotten to talked about his background. And it's one of the things that I always find fascinating is where chefs not only get their inspiration for their food, and we're going to get to that, but your background of coming up is that you you did this kind of just as a you, you grew into it right yes actually yeah I I grew up cooking with my grandmother my mother my father it was always family dinner was always a, a big deal to us so with that I went on to um, a technical high school so I, I I went to regular high school half the day and I went to a technical class and that's where you started the other half the and that's where I started with the programs there and I kind of just worked my way up from finishing donuts at Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> to, to making pizza and then to working no, at the shanty. But that's no small feat, and that's one of the things I always want to make sure I talk about is that to build yourself up the way that you've done. And you've been with her since the start over there, right? Since yes, that's, the that's correct. I started as a uh, prep cook, and then I worked my way up to the line, yep. and then to sous chef. And then when the old chef left, I took over his position. So in four years, you've moved up that many steps to yes. take over the restaurant now. Yep. So then as we get into this food, and it's amazing. So as we get into this food, tell me about your influence on the style where the menus come from. Well, um, more so, it's, it's probably more influenced based off of current food trends. I spend a lot of time reading new cookbooks that come out as opposed to the old ones. Yep. I spend a lot of time on social media looking at pictures of what other people are doing. I go out to eat, see what everybody's doing, and I kind of just bring a fusion of everything that I've learned together. 
So menu-wise, what's the hours that you guys are open? Uh, we are open for dinner service, 4 to 10, Monday through Thursday. Okay. 4 to 11 on Saturday. We're open for brunch, 10 a.m. to about 3.30 in the afternoon on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. And then from 4 o'clock to 11 o'clock, we're open for dinner. And that was one of the feedback I got to ask of you about brunch. So we'll get to, after we get through these dishes, I'm going to have the chef tell you what he has for brunch because I know yeah. everybody loves that. So yeah. let's talk about what you brought. What do we got here? I have a lobster roll, which is always a crowd oh favorite. God. It's... It's, it's lobster meat. <laughs> yeah, we, we make the mayonnaise in-house. It's our fresh celery. There's fresh lime zest every single time. It's, it's made to order every time. It's not like some places you get a, a, a batch. Yeah. They make a whole batch. But like I said, we make the mayonnaise. We zest lemons to order for it. Now, do you carry this year-round? We carry that. Actually, right now, we have been carrying it year-round on the brunch menu. Okay. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. God, it's making me hungry as well. Yeah, it's on a... Uh, butter toasted brioche bun too. Beautiful. And what do we got here? I have uh, another crowd favorite yam fries with a uh, roasted poblano aioli. So we just we we dredge we dredge the fries so they don't burn. Right. And it goes with that that mayo, the, the aioli that's house made. We roast the poblano peppers, the cilantro, lime juice. So everything's from scratch in there. Oh uh, yeah, literally as much as we could possibly do from scratch, we do. We don't have the facility to bake bread, things right. like that, but everything else is scratch cooking. But locally sourcing, I think that's something I read in there too, that you guys do a lot of the locally sourced yes, items. Yes, we, right? we do a lot of locally sourced items. We source as many vegetables as we possibly can local, especially like right now, it's a bit of a problem with the winter in right. Rhode Island. But once, the seasons. Yeah, once, once the summer comes out, I go to farmer's market on the weekly basis. Awesome. We work a lot with um, Rock's Fresh Foods. They do a great job of sourcing the food for us from local farms right so they do a fantastic job at that right what yeah. have we got here because this is we again look at this the yeah, style another, presentation and style uh, another another crowd please is the tv dinner the tv dinner. yeah so I it's a it. yeah it's, it's half a half a cornish game hen we brine it we we flour it we fry it goes with uh, smoked cheddar mac and cheese we have coleslaw right now we have cream spinach on the menu but it will be changing <laughs> i love that though. yeah That's awesome. it will be changing it's just kind of like Home style, what you would want from to get to get at home. You know what I mean? And you got a little piece of dessert. Yeah, a little dessert. That's just a uh, raspberry crumble bar. But what was the mac and cheese you said? A smoked cheddar mac and cheese. Yeah, I'm gonna have so much detail. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's just a little play on. And this is how it's served. This is this the presentation. Is exactly for it. how it's served. That's the presentation for it to a T. Love the style. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so you absolutely brought some great dishes for sure. Yeah. Tell us about some of the other things that are on the menu that you want to highlight. Uh, right now, I think uh, the crowd favorite is, is the scallop dish that's on the menu with a uh, wild mushroom risotto Beautiful. and balsamic reduction. We will be changing the menu soon, though. Going and, into the yeah, spring, summer season? In four, in four weeks. So that's why I didn't want to bring any specific menu items. That are going to be gone again. That are going to be gone, bit. yeah, right. exactly. Because it's just, it just sound, seems counterproductive. That way there, everybody can see what we have all the time right now right. and then come in for all the new stuff so when that menu changes in weeks like four weeks or so when it's coming in, yes again you're still keeping with the locally sourced item and working with oh. the and everything else yep there. yep so going into that and i want to make sure i don't skip over it before i get to the beverage stuff but let's talk about what's on the brunch menu because i got a lot of questions about what you offer for brunch okay uh usually it's it's basic things we have the shandy breakfast which is eggs your style however you want the eggs we have choice of bacon or sausage, although it's not noted on the menu. Yeah. You can get wheat toast, sourdough toast, homestyle potatoes. Um, we do a burrito. We do a loaded Bloody Mary too, which is really cool. They put, I mean, there's shrimp, all kinds of pickles. Kind of I mean, any, 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 it's literally, it's a meal in itself. Yeah, put a piece of yeah. bacon in there. I'm all oh, set. there is a piece of bacon is in there. Is it really? Yeah, there I'm is a piece set. of bacon in there. <laughs> yeah. God, so I love yeah. it. We have so, uh, the red flannel hash is a crowd pleaser, too. What is it, the red flannel Red hash? flannel hash. It's um, roasted beet hash. So it's potato hash with bacon. Yep. And we put beets in it. Traditionally served sour cream. Yeah, so you're not going to hungry at your brunch. For sure. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a meal in itself. Awesome. It's now, Going into the next two weeks, because you got yes. Easter coming up this weekend, and then yeah. Mother's Day, I think, what, four weeks, the five weeks after that. Yeah. Will you guys be doing brunch on those days as well? Uh, unfortunately, this year for Easter, we're going to close so the staff can be with their family. Nice. Yeah, because it just, we get a, a lot of people calling for large parties. And like I said, the back room, which is kind of like our function room, okay. is not that big. It's only 
20 people. So if that's all we can really fit. And what about Mother's Day? Mother's Day, we don't necessarily have anything planned. But it's a regular brunch. But it's, it will be a regular brunch, okay. yes. Yeah, so there will there'll be a few specials. So that way there people can pick and choose whatever they want. Nice. And you mentioned about the back room, how it can double up for private events. So if somebody wanted yes. to, up to a party of 20, if they wanted to do something in the back room, they could kind of set it up with you guys to do it. I think um, more so, it's it's more so about, um, I think the, the most we'll do is eight to 10 people. Okay. Uh, uh, during the week, it might be different than on the weekend. Got it. That's the thing is on, on the weekend, because we, we still, unfortunately, we still do have a business to run. And if we do a large party like that, it's it kind of takes over the style it of the restaurant. Of, it, kick, it takes over the style of the restaurant, where it's a it's a local friendly place where, I mean, we have regular customers that come in on a daily basis, and then, like I said, the, the primary function too is is uh, the bar seating area. Okay. Yeah. So and it's that's more the focal so point when you walk in. That's the whole it. focal point of the of it. it. The whole focal point of everything is a gastro pub style. So, so going into the pub style, yes. let's talk about your, because you got the beers that you brought in. So yes, yes. To highlight these, so let's talk about yes. the program that you have going on for that. All right. So um, whenever we see new local beers come out, we try to get that. And usually I think um, we have about 12 taps. And each one, except for the maybe one, which is Guinness, we it's usually all local beers currently on the menu right now. We not, may not have the Captain's Mr. Daughter, Ryan. we might have the Flying Jenny, but we do have the Rise APA. Uh, I believe we just changed from the Devil's Purse, too. So you're literally updating them as if these things, as the new ones come Oh, the, on, on a daily come basis. stuff all the time. Yeah. We've had Sean and they've yeah. got great stuff. On, on a daily it. basis, we are changing the bears over. Uh, I wanted to get Ragged Island for us today, but we didn't have... Devil's Purse, I love this. We didn't, we didn't have any cans. So it's and gonna be tough tasting different. all these things when they come in, huh? Oh, it's it's, 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 it's <laughs> luckily that job falls on me. I'm not, I'm not upset about that. So when you're doing that, so when that happens, when these things come in, are you thinking yes. about in your mind what you compare these things up with and make suggestions with people? And stuff? Oh, oh, of course, of course, because the, the 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 beer usually it should complement the food, right. I mean, because like I said, it's pub style, so we we do serve. I I love serving oh, the beer and pairing the beer with food. We we can give you wine suggestions too, but it's all about the different styles of beer, depending on what you're getting. It's kind of becoming your specialty and what you guys concentrate on on there. But yes. in addition to that, and I saw that Karen had up, is that you've got the craft cocktails as well. Yes, we do have craft cocktails as well. Now, yeah. is that the same thing where the bartenders are kind of being imaginative and coming up with what the guests are asking for and kind of pairing up with things as well? Yeah, you, yeah. usually we, um, as a team together, because it, 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 I know I'm here, but I still have the team back there. We come together with cocktails, thinking of what we'll pair with what menu items we're putting on. Like actually, like funny enough, we do have a drink called the Grapes of Wrath right <laughs> right now. And wouldn't, wouldn't you know, I just found that up today as well. I, didn't, I knew the drink, but I didn't know what the name was. That's too and, funny. Yeah, we worked with... Um, so Karen keeps a lot of those play on the book and yeah, everything Yeah, exactly. There, huh? we, had, we had a lot of plays on everything, like with the TV dinner and the, the, the drink, the play on the book, the name. No, uh, but that's being inventive. That's yeah. absolutely being inventive. So, one of the things I want to make sure that we talk about and highlight a little bit is that it's become, and you mentioned, you know, the gastro pub, but it's become yes. this neighborhood scene to kind of go into. Yes, and of course. I, I had someone that instant messaged me on Facebook and said, I feel like it's the cheers of the old days where they walk in and people know you, you, they you, know who you are. Everybody and, knows everybody. Right. Like, as I said, we I see the same faces day in, day out. Almost, it's, it's almost like clockwork. And it's a local spot. Yes. Also, where your location is, it's it's, it's important to say, and especially if you're going down to the water in this area, because it is on the Warwick East Greenwich Line, is yes. that it's an easy spot for you to find and to go in. And being four years old, you guys have reached that milestone of, of success now where you're going to keep going. So yes. if you're traveling down to that area, it's a spot that you can easily find where you highlighted and you want to make sure that you can, I mean, you can literally park and you said walk across the streets of the water. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 All right. So... We covered the style of the food. We got the stuff that you got there, the style yes. of the restaurant. From your standpoint and growing up in this industry, as you talked about, what are some of your favorite things on the menu that may or may not stay, but things that you think that people should check out now before the new menu changes over? Oh, I really do like, uh, I have a plate on chicken mole tacos on the on the menu right now. Okay. It's, it's, it's less sweet than a, you would actually think of a traditional mole. All right. So it's more so my, spin on it it's more it really pronounces like the, the nutty flavors of, of of the nuts and we also it's peanut free or most most moles are peanut based You're right peanut and chocolate 
based, but this one is totally peanut free. It's based with uh, sunflower seeds. Wow. And it still has anise, this, there's cardamom in there. and. So how did you decide to change up to going from the peanuts to the sunflower seeds? Um, well, one thing that we are big on too is, is accommodating people's dietary needs. Dietary right. needs. Right. Yes, we, we accommodate people's dietary needs so that way there, if they have allergies, we try to eliminate the cross-contamination, the allergen in the entire restaurant. Now, and I ask, I we do have peanuts on the menu, but we, we want to make sure that as a consumer, you can come in and just basically eat whatever and not have to change things. All right, so you got that. What's one of your favorite things for you to actually cook? That you like to For do? For me to actually yeah, cook? I always ask chefs what's their favorite thing to actually be in the kitchen. Uh, on the menu right on questions. the menu right now. Well, but in general, that's, that's it doesn't even have to be this one. nice on you What's one year? Because you've got a style that's mixed that you're bringing yes. in all these great things that you're able to do. Yes. And you said you've done a lot of research on a lot of things, that, the trends that are coming up. But is there a particular thing that you really like to make sure that you, you know, um, you cook, even if it's at home? Because everybody loves to know what chefs like to eat. <laughs> I mean, I, I do like to eat. I like to eat pizza and pasta. <laughs> that's that's those are my two favorite foods. But I think my favorite thing to cook. Well, I probably I do pride myself on making soups and sauces. Really? Yes, I, I really do. I like, I like trying new things and being inventive with soup flavors because I don't like to go out to eat and then go to the same restaurant so on a Monday and then you go the next Monday and the same soup special is it's right. the same soup special. Right. You know what I mean? That's so not easy we, things to do though. Soups no, and sauces are soups not. Soups and sauces are not. No, that's a no. challenging thing no, to and do. And it's, it's about the attention to detail. Right. Is what it is. Controlling the temperature, controlling your ingredients. And that's what it really comes down to. So with your background, and you like you, we talked about before that you worked your way up, and being that you've been at the Shanty for the four years and worked your way up now to executive chef, yeah. you've got to have some encouragement for people because it's no short milestone that you've accomplished. Is the team that comes into the kitchen, do you see both people that have been in the culinary world and people that have grown up like yourself? Uh, um, for the most part, I do see a lot of uh, people who've Grown up in the culinary world, the Johnson and Wales students, okay. I do see people that are self-taught too. A lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yes, because it's more so. I mean, everybody has to eat. No, right? and it's it's funny because Craig Collin, who was in before you, was the governor Francis Inlet's in Warwick, and he's been there 21 years. And he was mentioning how he's had longevity of people that have come there, but they grew up in the industry, so it wasn't yes. as if they went and got school. Exactly. Doing. And I'm not taking anything away from that as well, but the real life experience of what you've gotten, what you've accomplished, are no short milestones. So yes. I, I gotta give you credit with that, and I wanna give Kara a lot of credit for taking the initiative, going to Johnson & Wales and opening up her own restaurant, because yes. it's, 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 it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of work for no sure. no small feat. Not at all. No small, there's all. something around every corner with it. For sure. Now, yes. Chef, I covered a lot. Is there anything you think I missed that we wanna make sure that we highlight? Um, I think we did pretty well. I think good. we did pretty <laughs> well. Yeah, the time we, we tried this mac and cheese. Yeah, we have we have the, the, the menu staples, we covered the bear, covered the background and like also but the thing is I know I am here as I said before, but there is a whole team that you're working yeah, with. Yeah, that I'm working with and it's not just me, it's everybody involved. It's Kara, it's Amber the bar manager, Austin my sous chef, he does a lot. The entire staff, all the way down to the, the dishwashers, honestly. You know, and it's something cool to mention that and talking about your team is that if you go to the Shanties website Kara's done a great job, and you've all done a great yes. job of highlighting each of these positions on yes. there, highlighting the people in their background, which I think is a unique thing. It does lend to that neighborhood welcome feel of coming in and knowing who some of the people are before you walk in the door. Yes, so exactly. again, congratulations to Kara and the team on that. You've done yes. a good job. Well, Chef, thank you for making it in today. I appreciate you taking the time. I know you got a lot going on. And congratulations yes. again. All right, thank, thank you very you so much. much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right. So as we get ready to close out, Kate Nagel is up next with everything in news and politics, and she's always got exciting things to talk about and great guests. So she'll be in in just a few minutes, but Thank you for joining me today on The Taste. I'm Rick Simone. I'll see you next Wednesday.